Good afternoon. I am Subrata Sen. I am a professor of marketing at uh, the Yale School of Management, and I'm delighted to introduce this uh, session on innovation. Uh, we have four uh, terrific papers on, uh, on four different aspects of innovation. Uh, we have, of course, to worry about our customers. So one of the papers is about that. Uh, then uh, customers might change in their views. And so how do you react to that? One of the presentations deals with that issue. Uh, third, uh, there's always this issue about design. Innovation is not innovation without design. So another presentation is about design. And finally, what we have is, uh, is, is a terrific paper on growing a new business. And we will start with that particular paper. Let me introduce the speaker. Uh, he is, uh, he is uh, I, I'd better get his name correct, Nick Horbachevsky. Good, good. <laughs> All right. And he's, he's representing Tough Mudder. He's the chief revenue officer at Tough Mudder, where he's responsible for worldwide revenue generation. Uh, the interesting thing about his background as I was reading it is that before he joined there, he was, in fact, uh, teaching hand-to-hand -hand combat in the elite military and law enforcement units around the world. So you guys had better not get on his wrong side. Okay? <laughs> All yours. Great. You know, I always get excited when I'm coming to a presentation like this, and they're like, you're going after the big data guys. And I'm like, everyone's going to be asleep. And instead, they're showing videos that make us all cry. So that's not really a fair way to start. My name is Nick Horbachevsky, and I work for Tough Mudder. I do two things for Tough Mudder. The first thing I do is customer acquisition, and the second thing I do is lead our customer insights team. Sitting in the audience here is Ted Comier. Ted actually does all the work on our customer insights team. Ted is a Princeton-trained rocket scientist, so I'm very fortunate to have him. Um, so I'm going to talk to you today about Tough Mudder, uh, talk to you about a few different elements of the company. First, about our incredible growth and how our brand-led, very idealistic principles were core to that growth. And then I'm going to take you into a new problem we've had, which is the way those same core brand principles created really unique and vexing problems as we set out to create a loyalty program. Our goal was to create a program that would encourage people to come back and do the event more often. And we found those same principles really narrowed our options of what we could do. So before I get into that, though, just a quick poll. So hands up if you've heard of Tough Mudder. That's awesome. We love that. That's good. Hands up if you've done a Tough Mudder. <laughs> Lots of prospective customers. Even better. <laughs> love to hear that. So since we have a, a bit of an uninitiated crowd, I'll do a quick video first that tells you a little bit about the event. I'm telling y'all, you inspired the hell out of me. When those haters are out there telling us we can't achieve goals, you're the ones that step up and you get it done. We might have ran a marathon, did a triathlon. Let me tell y'all something. This ain't that. That's gonna test all you got. I hope you brought it. If you brought it, give me a hoorah. Hoorah! Oh, we're gonna test your fitness today. Hoorah! Hoorah! I'll test your stamina. Hoorah! Hoorah! Toughness. Hoorah! Hoorah! Ferrari. Hoorah! Hoorah! Yo, that mental break. Give me a loud hoorah! Hoorah! So what do you need to know about Tough Mudder? Tough Mudder is a 10 to 12 mile military style obstacle course. So that's just the basics. But there's two key things I want you to remember about our product. The first one is Tough Mudder is not a race. It is a challenge. It is untimed. You are not rewarded for finishing faster. You do not beat anybody else. You do not finish first. 
The course is designed that you need to complete it with teamwork. It's not to be completed to be designed as an individual. The second thing, key thing to remember about us is that we're a mission-driven company. You look at that number at the bottom, that's probably the number we're most proud of. We've raised over $7 million for charity worldwide. In the US, we support the Wounded Warrior Project. So we're very proud of that. So then the question I get the most often is, who, who does these things? The answer is, it's a huge and diverse group of people, ranging from firefighters to investment bankers, from endurance athletes to weekend warriors. It's a range of people. You can see it's about 30% female, 70% male. That, that demographic is actually shifting. It's becoming more 40, 60 this year. And the other thing I remember about the people who do this is every Tough Mudder I go to is full of these incredible personal stories. So you meet the people who do it. People do it. They do it to lose weight. They do it because they're overcoming addiction. They do it because they've lost a loved one. Uh, they do it because they've had a serious injury and they're recovering from it. I would say the Tough Mudder is full of the incredible amount of human drama and just beautiful stories about people overcoming, using this to overcoming challenges in their own life. Let's see if this thing's working. Nope. Oh. All right. Hmm. You may be stuck. Uh, anyway, I'll continue talking about it. So the next thing I was going to talk about is, so the other thing to know about Tough Mudder is, it's big. About 600,000 people completed a Tough Mudder worldwide in 2013. In 2014, we'll have over 60 events in seven countries. So generalizing a little bit, the, the mud run space, this new obstacle mud run space, is only a couple of years old. And to give you a sense of the scale of it, three times as many people will do an obstacle mud run this year in the US than will run a marathon. And what's the difference between these things? Well, they're not marathons. They are brand-led, high-affiliation products. What does that mean? How does that translate? If you look on Facebook, the top three marathons in the US by participation have about 290,000 likes combined. The top three obstacle mud runs have 7.8 million likes. It's just a much more affiliation product. People think about these brands. They care about these brands. And that's really been the secret to our success, that strong, brand-led, highly principled approach. We talk about several core elements of our product, and that is really what we're all about. And it's what makes the experience unique. Oh, they're going to fix this. I'm sure they'll give you extra time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See if that guy works? Are we on screen? All right. There we go. Very large, all over the world. Just talked about that part. Moving on. So, what are these brand led principles? What am I talking about? Well, there's toughness. Yes, tough motor is difficult. It's 10 to 12 miles. It will test your physical endurance, your strength. But more important than that, it'll test your mental grit. What Tough Mudder is about at a lot of levels is about facing your fears, your fear of heights, your fear of ice, fire, electricity, confined spaces, you name it. New York Magazine commenting on Tough Mudder and what made it different than so many other experiences said, what sets Tough Mudder apart is the drama of its obstacles. And it's not really the obstacles that create the drama. It's the people going over them. It's them pushing themselves to the limit, trying things they would otherwise be afraid to do. It's about community. Once you do a Tough Mudder, you're part of a community of people that share your values, have had a common experience. You can talk about it at the water cooler. You can talk about it at the bar. It's about fun. It's a really fun time. People do silly things. They wear silly costumes. People dress up in chicken suits and do the obstacles. I was going to do this presentation in a chicken suit. Ted told me not to, so I didn't. But it's not something we take very seriously. It's about having fun. It's about a great time with your friends. It's sincere, though. As I said, we're a purpose-driven company. Uh, in addition to that, it's an event people take seriously. It's about them challenging themselves. How sincere does this product feel? Does this brand feel to the consumers that use it? Well, just an example. In the middle there, you see a Tough Mudder tattoo. Over 4,000 of our participants have had our logo tattooed on their body. That's how they feel about our product. It's social. We were one of those businesses built on Facebook back when organic reach was plentiful. Thank you, Carolyn, for shutting that door behind us. Um, there are, we post a lot socially. And we talk with an irreverent voice. It's a very anti-corporate voice. 
We talk to our customers in the voice of our community, the way they talk to each other. That's one of the reasons we've been so successful on social. And it means we do things like post things that are difficult for most companies to do. Here's a picture. Here's a post we did uh, when a hurricane was bearing down on the East Coast. And before it hit, we put a little Tough Mudder headband on it and talked about how that hurricane was a Tough Mudder. Difficult to do if you're not willing to engage with people on the way their friends engage with them. It's also egalitarian. One of the things about Tough Mudder is, everyone who's done a Tough Mudder is a Tough Mudder. And the symbol of that, the symbol of that fellowship that you join when you finish the event is the headband. You see here people getting the headband put in their head after a race and sitting in their office wearing it on what we call Headband Mondays, the day after one of our events. A couple things about the headband. You don't buy the headband, you earn it. And everybody who has the headband has had this one shared experience. It doesn't matter where you did a Tough Mudder, it doesn't matter how long it took you. You are a Tough Mudder. When you see someone else in that headband, you know what it means. And that headband means something because it's authentic. It's an authentic event. That's real mud. That's real barbed wire. You're actually out experiencing these things. We don't pull any punches. It's not a simulation. It's not digital. It's not Disney World. So this raises a little bit of an issue, though, which is that's all great about Tough Mudder, but it's something you want to do twice. <laughs> that's a little bit of a different issue. So our customers actually tell us they really want to come back and do our event again. Uh, and certainly plenty of people do. But the repeat rate isn't quite where we'd want it to be. There's always more opportunity there. So we set out to create a loyalty program that we thought would bring people back more often. And we thought, this is great. So this is Ted and I set out to figure out what it is. And the first thing you do, you go out and you talk to your customers. This feels like a great thing to do. Uh, we learned a lot in that study. And I think the one thing more than anything else we learned was that consumer insights can be its own obstacle. So it's very challenging sometimes when you talk to your customers and they're telling you things, and it's a conflict. So those same very core brand principles, you see fun, you see tough, you see sincere, egalitarian, they mean a lot to the people who do our event. And the challenge is when you start talking about what you're going to do differently, they find themselves at conflict sometimes between what they want and how they perceive your product. So I'll give you a really tangible example to make this a little bit easier. This is electroshock therapy. Electroshock therapy is a big wooden trestle that has hundreds of wires dangling off of it, and it's connected to a machine. And that machine, every couple of seconds, delivers about 10,000 volts through one of those wires randomly. The obstacle is to run through those wires. You may get through without being shocked. You may be shocked several times. It's all random. The shock is completely harmless, but it is painful, and it's a little bit disorienting when you get hit by 10,000 volts all of a sudden while trying to run and jump over hay bales in the mud. So when we talked to our customers about electroshock, we got this profound message from them saying, one of the main reasons they didn't want to come back and do our event is because they didn't want to get electrocuted again. That feels perfectly reasonable. <laughs> so Ted and I had a special moment. We said, we can just take it off course. And we turned to our customers and said, great, we'll just get rid of it. And they said, no, no, that's not a Tough mutter. I'm not going to do that. And we're like, so you, you want us to, you won't come back because of it, but if we take it away, then you definitely won't come back because it's not the thing you've done. It's just the kind of answers we were getting throughout this process. I'll give you another example, which is all tough mutters are equal, but some are more equal than others. This egalitarian concept is really important to our customers. They want to think about everybody as equal. As equal. They've joined this community where they've had a shared experience, they've earned their headband, and it means something. So when we talk to them about concepts like rewards, they said, yeah, I want to be rewarded. I want to be rewarded for coming back. We're very used to that as consumers now. If I give you my business, I expect some, sort of, some form of rebate or reward. Um, but when we talked about giving them rewards, they had a very adverse reaction. They said, that, that doesn't feel right. If you're giving me rewards, if I'm like someone in an airline who has status, or if you're giving me a rebate, I'm some VIP, then we're all not mutters. We're, 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 that, that breaks the whole concept of what you guys are, what you do here. So once again, they told us, please reward us, but if you introduce a rewards program, we won't come back. <laughs> Thank you. The last thing is toughness. So toughness is a really funny concept, because toughness is, by its nature, a moving target. We talk about our event as being probably the toughest event on the planet. But it's an interesting concept, which is, even if you come out and do a Tough Mudder, and it's the toughest thing you've ever done, the second time you do it, by definition, it is not the toughest thing you've ever done. And in fact, it probably doesn't feel very tough at all, or less tough. Certainly getting electrocuted always feels tough. Um, and we had these conversations where people, where we said, OK, 
you felt like it was borderline too tough the first time you did it. It was not tough enough the second time you did it, but it was the exact same course. And we found ourselves in conversations where it felt like we were looking for some Goldilocks solution, the right kind of toughness. And we came to realize that just doesn't exist. This is about people's perception. It's about their experience. It will never feel the same the second time. There is no perfect solution. So they gave us all this really helpful feedback. Uh, and we went back and we thought about it a lot. And we came up with our solution, which we call Mutter Legion. So I'll take you through Mutter Legion and its basic principles. But the main thing to know about it is it's not a rewards program. It's a recognition program. It's about conferring to those who have experience the responsibility that comes with that experience. So what do we do to people? We give them different color headbands. On the left there, you see the pyramid, the, the different colors that come with the number of tough mutters you've completed. And on the right, people on the finish line celebrating what they're doing. But this isn't about an airline status. When you wear a colored headband, it means you have more responsibility. You have more responsibility on the course to help other mutters through obstacles. First time mutters should turn to you and ask you, how do you get over these walls? What do I do when I jump into the giant ice bath? What's going on there? So our main focus on this, and we convey this a lot in our start line speeches where we prep people for the courses, look for those experienced mutters. But we're not, we're not rewarding them. They're, this isn't status on the airlines. These people aren't VIPs. They're people who carry a special obligation. And they can earn recognition within their community. The second thing we did, Legionnaire's Loop. So once you've got your colored headband, you're a Legionnaire. And we added these special loops to the courses. They're offshoots off the normal course. You can only go on them if you've been through the course before. And we get to put on them all kinds of things. They're at extra distance. That always adds challenge. And we get to add new and exciting obstacles for them, obstacles that would probably be uh, challenging to put out to a bunch of people who've never done this before. But those experienced people, they know what these obstacles are about. They know how to come over those challenges. So we get to go out in some of our fun obstacle drawings on the side there. But it's a way to add challenge for those who need it, and only those who need it, without changing the core product, which was people's big fear when we talked about trying to vary. You know, We'll have three heights of walls, and you can pick which one. That, that varies the experience. But this pulls them into their own zone. The final thing we did is a very Tough mutter style solution, <laughs> which was the electricity thing. We said, all right, you don't want to do the electricity. So we built another obstacle next to it, an obstacle that was challenging in a way that you would really only want experienced people to go through it. Uh, and it bypasses around the electricity so you need to do it. So instead of electrocuting you, we just light you on fire. <laughs> so this is what Mutter Legion is. And you can see, it's a very different take on a loyalty program. It's a recognition program. And it's one that confers more about responsibility than it does about benefits. You get to bypass electroshock, but you go through a giant wall of fire in the process. You gain access to the Legionnaire's Loop, more challenge. We're giving you the opportunity to push yourself further. You earn the colored headband that within your community symbolizes that responsibility. And with it carries your obligation to help your fellow mutters and to be a leader on the course. Thank you. Time for questions. Question. Yeah. What's the result of your Legionnaires program, or is it too early to tell? No, it's, it's a great question. So uh, we launched the Legionnaires program this spring, and the feedback has been just fantastic. Uh, our customers love it. They've been really excited by it. We've had lots of engagement. Um, and it's interesting. So we're in a small space. There's several other people in our space. And, and you know, we tend to move in sync, because that's what happens in small spaces like ours. So several of our competitors launched similar programs this fall. And one of them launched a program that was much more like an airline. Like you complete different, if you, if you fly enough segments, you get a special status and you get a special, uh, you know, basically medal that rewards you and some benefits that come with it. And that got a very bad reaction from their community. And I think if you looked at these two programs on the surface, you would say they're not that different. You're, they're giving them a medal, you're giving them a headband. So can, but it was understanding these consumers, it's understanding this push and pull between what our customers wanted and what they found unacceptable because of the brand principles we've built the company on that really made the difference. Over here? Oh, there. Hello? Okay. I'm interested in the process for um, these qualitative interviews. 
Do you contract them out to other firms? Do you personally go do it? How do you know when it's enough people? How do you get the meatiness? And you know, if you could talk about that process, that'd be great. Sure, so our process of gathering consumer insights. So we use several different processes. So we're, very, we're a very data-driven company, so we have access to a ton of data, and we have a huge customer database. So we do a lot of surveying of our own. We talk to our customers. We use outside firms to help us with certain types of focus groups and interviews, and also finding prospective customers who are important to talk to as well. Uh, lastly, because we have these events, we have physical contact with all of our customers on a regular basis. So we do two things with that. One is we do exit intercepts. We talk to people directly. But I'd also say that everybody on the insights team, everybody who works in the marketing department, we go to these events. We run these events. Uh, I ran nine Tough Mudders last year, and not because I'm a glutton for punishment, but because I could talk to the customers. We could engage with them in that moment, and you could hear the stories. You could hear why they were running, what mattered to them. And I would say that that mix of the, qua the hard quantitative stuff with that qualitative that puts it in perspective, that was critical as we walked, really it was a fine line between what we were hearing. If you just read the quantitative study and we'd done what they'd asked for, I think we would have overcorrected. We would have given them things that in the end didn't really satisfy them because they undermine the fundamental brand principles. Last question. Sure. Uh, how do mutters socialize before or after events? How do they socialize? Yes. Uh, well, so mutters gather in all kinds of ways. So people tend to prepare for the event through some kind of physical training. It's obviously a long enough event. So we see people gathering either through their gyms or the teams they form to do the event to do um, either social events or training, running, things like that. Um, after the event, uh, typically you see two things. Immediately after the event, that we have an area that people can gather in. They can, they're covered in mud. They can share their stories. They get their team photo. And then we have a huge economic impact on the places we go because they'll go out in the town and they celebrate. Uh, <laughs> if you go to one of the resorts town where we have one, Mount Snow in Vermont or Whistler in Canada, it is a sea of people in orange headbands sort of congregating. And certainly a critical part of the experience is that opportunity to share what you've done, to retell the story, to talk about going through electroshock, to talk about jumping into Arctic enema and having to swim through a big pile of ice. Thank you very much. <laughs>